Hi stampers, welcome back to Did You Stamp Today? It's been a long time since I've made a video, but I thought today would be a good day to share one of the cards that uh, we made in my last class. Today we're using the uh, Harvest Meadow Suite collection, and um, you can find that on page 55 of the, well, 54, 55, and 56 of the mini catalog. And this is the full box. So some nice sentiments and some pretty flowers to work with. And it also has coordinating designer series paper and um, with some beautiful colors that we're going to use a lot of today. So let's get started. So I've got my whole packet set here. We've got some soft succulent for the card base. We've got our insert. We've got some nice patterns from our designer series paper. And we've got some other layers for our die cutting. What else is in here? Oh, and this. This is one of my favorite things. It's the cork paper from um, the mini catalog that's on page 55. And you get two 12 by 12 sheets for $7.50. And um, we're going to use a little bit of that today in our accent piece. And then we're going to be using the harvest dies. Those are some of them. They're all slid around. And then for our label shapes that um, we're going to cut with, the label shapes we're going to use um, from the seasonal labels dies. I just like the shapes of these and might as well get some more use out of a Christmas uh, die set than just Christmas. So let's get started. For this one first I would say definitely stamp your cone flowers first and we're going to be using some early espresso. Let them get stamped and dried off so then when you go to use your blends to color, your lines won't bleed. So just give that a good stamp. Make sure you've got your flower heads all kind of centered with a little bit of the stem showing. So you'll have plenty of room to cut and you can always take a quick judge. Yep, fits in the die. And then while we've got the ink out and we might as well stamp our sentiment. So the sentiment is just gonna be stamped on a little scrap of soft succulent. We'll let those two dry and then we'll start putting together the rest of the card. So, like I said before, we've got our soft succulent base. Let me get my bone folder out. Get that nice and crisp. And then we're going to line all these up. They each have their own backing. It's a little bit of cutting for this, but definitely not anything too crazy. So we're just going to a little dab. And the cork paper is really light, so don't think that's going to add any bulk to any of your projects. It's just a super lightweight um, paper, and it just has a cool feel, and it's cork. It's not printed. It's actual cork. So if you're looking for some fun accents for your fall cards or any time of the year, even some guy cards, be a nice accent for a guy card when you normally want to use a lot of ribbon on a card, but you know, because it's a guy card, you can only put so many fibers on. The cork is a nice way to add something a little different and jazz up a card a bit. So here we go, we've got all these. Try to get them as straight as I can. I don't want to stick my big head in front of the camera. And of course, I've got mine lined up like this. I'm just going to make it the same way, but you could absolutely mix and match, turn them around a little bit. <clears throat> and this one, I've cut them all so they pretty much line up. So I'm going to do my long one first, and then that'll make it easier to judge. I'll do a little bit more right there to line up my other one. So we just want to leave a little bit around the edge of each panel. Try to keep it even all the way around. A little bit more. And then by the time you finish these steps, your ink will be pretty dry. So you can go ahead and start coloring. All right, hopefully that's straight. It's hard to tell if I can't stick my head straight over it, but y'all get the idea. And then this one, I'm gonna line up the end 
with our top layer and try to get that one lined up. There we go, that looks pretty good. Before we get started on the coloring coloring, I'll show you what we're gonna be doing with the envelope and the inside of the card. So, made a couple die cuts. Where's my other one? Oops, still in the case. So, using the coneflower die, I cut out a couple and I used a uh, basic white thick just to give it a little bit more weight. And I'm going to use a little bit of our retired repositional adhesive. And we're gonna make it a little stencil. And then we'll use, let's use some clips of coral here. And then on the envelope, we'll use the bumblebee. So, do clips of coral first. So, you're just gonna pick up a little bit of your ink. And I always like to start off the card stock just so you don't get a really dark blotch right away that you've really gotta work and blend in. So then you can go lightly and just, I do circular motions all the way around. If it looks like you need a little bit more ink, pick up a little bit more ink and come in on the bottom. Go across. All right, we'll peel that one off. Then you've got the nice little cone flower shape. This is just a fun way to add a little something different to the inside if you didn't want to have to stamp the cone flowers again and do you know a lot more coloring. Sometimes a little bit of blending goes a long way depending on what else you've got going on that day. So I always thought it was fun to try something different on the inside. Obviously switch brushes. Again, pick up a little bit of your ink. I'm gonna swing this one around, so. Just a nice light circular motion. Clearly the harder you press, the more ink will go down onto your paper. I might have given a little bit too much on that one. But you know what? That's all right. A little bit more color out in the Postal Service. Just peel that one off. Brush off any of the stray adhesive. There you go. That's a bumblebee, but don't do that. That's all right. That's where the stamp will go. So nobody will ever see that. All right. I think we're ready to do a little bit of coloring with our blends. And I will make sure y'all know that I am not a very good colorer. Kind of try to let the, the markers do the work. <clears throat> so this one... I'm just gonna follow kind of where the natural highlights already are from the artwork where it's a little bit darker I'll put maybe a little bit more ink down go lightly and you're not going to get all the leaves in when you're die cutting so you don't need to worry about going all the way down you just want to make sure you get Kind of do a little bit more in there just in case. And a little bit darker where it's got some natural shading. And so we're using, by the way, soft succulent. And you can use both of them. I just use the one because it's a pretty small area. Area. We've got uh, light and dark daffodil delight. And we've got light and dark calypso coral and light and dark soft suede that's what we're going to be using and we don't have uh stampin up doesn't carry blends in the bumblebee color to match our ink but that's okay there's only a little bit in the pattern of paper and the daffodil delight fills in just right for that but we do have the calypso coral which is this color so um it all it all comes together so let me do my soft suede first and again I'm going to use my darker down at the bases where it's just a little bit darker than the artwork. Stampin' Up! artists give us some place to start for those of us who aren't super artistic coloring. I can never figure out shading on my own. I'm like I don't know where the light's coming from and so Stampin' Up! makes it easy for us in a lot of the artwork. You just kind of follow the shading. So there's our tops. 
And for the flower petals, you can do whatever you want. I'm gonna start with, let's do a little bit of the dark. I do a little bit of the dark down at the base and just kind of brush it out. And then go back over it with a little bit of the Daffodil Delight and just kind of fill it in and blend it down. And then we'll pull in a little bit of the Calypso Coral color coming down towards the, the tips. Now I'm going faster here. You guys can probably take a little bit more time, but since I'm not a super duper colorer, you're not going to learn too much from me as far as the the techniques and stuff. This is something that I hope, now that the kids are back in school, that maybe I can watch a couple more tutorials. And oops, got a little bit of outside my thing, use my color lifter, just try to pull up some of that. All right, now a little bit of the dark Calypso Coral just on the tips, and then I'll go back and blend it the rest of the way with my Calypso Coral Light. It just takes a couple minutes to pull these together. And one of the things that appealed to me about this stamp set and the papers was that you could kind of, well, the stamp set you can make just about, use any colors you want, even if they're not ones that you really find in nature, who cares, right? Pick a pretty color combination and go for it. Do a little bit under there. There we go. And then we'll just go back and kind of do the same thing on the larger flower. Just kind of bring, bring some of those colors down. <clears throat> Why don't we do this one while we're at it? We'll just do a little bit of that at the tips. But the papers I thought were slightly fallish without being overtly leaves and browns and you know like kind of those fall tree colors but the colors all together really remind me of some nice fall shades so that's why I chose to use this one in my classes this this month or in I guess in August my August classes And when it all dries, it all looks a little bit more blended, but while it's drying on its own, it might look a little bit splotchy. But I did warn you that I am not an artist and coloring is not my forte. I don't know what my forte is, but I can definitely tell you it's not coloring. And then let's see, we're gonna use just a little tiny bit since this is just a bud and it's not all the way out yet. Oops, totally forgot to do that part of the stem. So we're gonna color in this with soft succulent. But since this one is a bud and not all the way out, I thought that maybe it would look better with just the Calypso Coral. I'll just do a little bit of that at the base and then fill in the rest. There we go. All right. Not too bad for a quickie. And it's nice, these aren't so big that it takes a really, really long time to blend everything that you can get it done pretty quickly. So I'll be right back once I get everything die cut. So we're gonna use this one for the die cut, for the flowers, and then the little label. And again, both of these shapes are from the Christmas season. Oh, seasonal labels dies. I gotta learn all the new names. So I'll be right back. All right, now I'm back with my die cut so that we can put the rest of the card together. So we've got our two things for the front. Put these away. And we've got our envelope. And we've got our insert. So we're just going to put some dimensionals on the back. And I'm afraid. 
firm believer in balanced dim, uh, dimensional application. So I don't, I don't want anything to get bent funny in the mail. So I always tend to keep all my corners supported. I'm just going to put it here. We don't want to cover up too much of any one of our designer series papers. All right, and then we'll do a little bit of adhesive on that side and one more dimensional on this side. And we're gonna tuck this one right on that corner. Make sure it's straight again. I don't wanna stick my head over to see, but that looks pretty straight from here. And last but not least, I have some elegant faceted gems and there's three different there's like a clear shiny kind of a brownish shiny and then like a white glittery shiny so um i had all my stampers pick whichever one they wanted and let's see my sample i used the dark the brownish small one so how about we use this one right here i use my paper piercer tool to pick that up and this is Slide it right where I want, and then we'll stick our insert in. And there we go. Thanks so much for watching. See you again soon.